everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Florida Keys History and Discovery Center. My name is Blake, and we're going to be diving into another piece of our Moat Marine Laboratory exhibit. Um, and today we're going to be talking about one of the animals we have here on site. We're going to be talking about our balloon fish. So we're going to be doing a feeding. Uh, if you missed the feeding that we had, a month ago on our main exhibit here. You're gonna get a chance to see that again. Um, and we're gonna be sharing with you a few more facts about our resident balloon fish, um, like the foods that he eats, along with the other critters. So we'll go ahead and we'll start out. I'm gonna be showing you the foods that we're feeding today, who's gonna be eating them, and I'll climb up there and feed the animals. So let's start out here. We're going to be feeding a mixture of krill and mysis shrimp. Krill is this larger one here, and then the mysis shrimp is in here as well. It's a lot smaller. I can't really grab a piece to show you, but you'll see it floating around in the water column in there. And this is a good meaty food for our fish. Help them, you know, get in a nice enriched diet. We're also going to be feeding them some seaweed, some green seaweed here. This is the exact same stuff that you get on your favorite sushi rolls. So this is going to be for our tangs. They will devour this stuff. And then we also have a couple of thawed out shrimp here, raw shrimp. Um, this one has had its shell removed. This is going to be for the puffer for today. And then this one still has its shell on it. This is going to be for the lobster. So let's go ahead and climb up here. You guys will get a first hand view of the feeding stuff. So we'll start out just the same as last time with our seaweed, our algae. What I will do is I will put it in my grabbers here and we'll just go ahead and we'll stick it here in the water and you'll see they like, just devour that. The angelfish, the tangs. Rip it out of there. And you can see Larry the lobster is up there at the top. He is going to go ahead and walk over here. And we're going to give him his shrimp. Take the shrimp here and put it in the water. Take it over to the lobster there. Let him grab it so he has it now. Now we're going to take our mixture. We'll take our mixture of krill and mysa shrimp here. What we're doing is a called a broadcast feed. So I'll take the food and I'll put it right here in front of this water uh, return. <laughs> let it distribute all throughout the tank. You'll see everybody going crazy. Like I said, today isn't about the entire tank. Today we are going to dedicate just to our balloon fish. So we've got a little bit of a special treat for him. He loves this shrimp. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll use my grabbers here and put it in the water and we'll see if we can get him to come over and take some of his favorite foods. Here he comes. We won't, we won't be mean. We'll give the uh, French angel some of it too. He loves it too. <laughs> he 
just devours that shrimp. So we'll talk about our friend here. Like I said, he is a balloon fish. He is from the genus Diodon species Polycanthus. And you will find this guy here in the Florida Keys, in the Caribbean, along with tropical waters all around the world. So you can find him off the coast of California, you can find him in Hawaii, in the east coast and west coast of Africa, down into Brazil. He is all around the world. His habitat is going to be in shallow coral reefs, along with seagrass beds, mangroves. <laughs> he likes to here. hang out near the bottom. He usually hangs out in depths of 6 to 50 feet underwater. And his diet consists of mollusks, sea urchins, hermit crabs, and other crabs. So if you can get a good look at his face there, he has his teeth are fused together into a sort of like a beak. And he uses that beak to help him crack open shells on those, those crustaceans. So he uses it to crack open the shells of the snails to get to the, the meaty parts, to crack open the shells on crabs. And that's why he has no issue with that, that shrimp. That would be part of his diet for him to find out in the wild. Now he is a nocturnal predator, so he'll go out at nighttime to find these, these prey. But he's a very shy fish. Uh, when encountered by divers, he's very timid, he'll duck back into the corals or into the seagrass, into the mangroves. Doesn't really want to go out when there's threats in the air. Now he's related to porcupine fish, burfish, and there are about 19 other species similar to the balloon fish that have those well-defined spines and the ability to inflate. And that him inflating is his, his defense mechanism. So he's a balloon fish. And what he'll do is he'll intake a whole bunch of water and puff himself up. And those spines you see laying flat along his body, those will, those will all stick out. Now our guy here has inflated on one occasion and I was lucky enough to get a photo of it. So we'll show you a picture of him here. Uh, he looks quite, quite freaky. Like a hedgehog. Does look like a hedgehog. Um, this is not something that you want to happen. So like I said, he will inflate himself when he's stressed. He feels threatened. Um, and on that occasion, he felt threatened by the lobster. And it was a, a funny situation. The lobster had startled him and fell on top of him. <laughs> and that caused our balloon fish to inflate himself. Uh, and after a certain period of time, it was about two minutes, what he'll do is he'll expel all that water and he'll go back to it. He doesn't stay in one place for very long. He does not. He is... Challenging your camera woman very today. Very camera shy. Very camera shy today. He knows he's being filmed and talked about. Is it a male or a female puffer? Uh, whether it's a male or a female puffer, we really can't tell. Um, it's, there's really no way to sex the, the puffer. 
Um, just by looking at it, I, I think you would have to do, you'd have to get inside and take a look. A little bit about the life history of our balloon fish. So when they're juveniles, what they'll do is they will hang out in the floating sargasm out in the ocean. So you know those large algal mats floating around the sargasm. Well, they act as a little ecosystem all in themselves. And you'll find a lot of juvenile balloon fish in there. They use it as protection from larger animals because until they get older, that is their, their main habitat. They try and hide themselves from large open water pelagic predatory fish, such as tuna and dolphins. But their predators, when they get the size of our balloon fish, are mainly just sharks. So this guy would only have to really worry about sharks when he is out in the wild. Ellen says he needs a name. He does need a name. He doesn't have a name. Currently. Maybe we'll have a contest. Yeah, we might have to. We might have to go ahead and post your suggestions below on what you think we should name our resident balloon fish. We've had him for about two years now. And he has gone nameless. So <laughs> our guy here, he's about, oh, I would say eight inches and he's that's that's average size for them so they they range between eight inches to 40 14 inches about a little bit over a foot and they can get up to maximum of 20 inches how big was he when we got him he was a little bit smaller than that you can see he's put on a little bit of weight which is good it, it's good for him um, he probably was about, I would say, half that size. And then my fun fact I have about our balloon fish is that in certain Pacific Island communities, the balloon fish, they would take it and they would fashion it into a hat. They would puff it up <laughs> and they would make it into a hat. And I thought that was, I mean, it's pretty, Pretty morbid, but I mean, it's <laughs> quite a wild fact. And it's pretty wild. Uh, a general, <laughs> we need a general neutral neutral name. Gender neutral. Yeah. yeah. Polly the puffer. We'll have a contest. Yeah. Definitely post post your ideas on what you think we should name our gender neutral balloon fish. But yeah, he's you you can see he's dark back and forth in this tank. He's getting his exercise in. He just ate his lunch, so he's got to work out. Work off all those calories that he took in. So I think next week we're going to do another species breakdown. Um, stay tuned for which one it's going to be. But we'll tell you a little bit more about some of the other animals that we have here. That should be it for today here at the Florida Keys History and Discovery Center. Uh, like I said, my name is Blake, and I'm the aquarium biologist here. Uh, we thank you for tuning in to our Facebook Live. We hope everybody's staying healthy and safe at home. Uh, until next time, tune up. Good night, everybody.